Hey, welcome to the 40 Finance channel, everybody. Today we've got Wells Fargo adding to the stock market uh, negative commentary with their list of 50 stocks to short or at least avoid, as they say here on Seeking Alpha. So we're gonna go through this list and I'll share my opinion on some of the names and then I backtracked a little bit uh, using Seeking Alpha and I found uh, Wells Fargo's list of stocks to buy. So we'll kind of compare the two and see if there's any discrepancies in the thought process. And as we're going through the video today, if you like what you see here on Seeking Alpha Premium, my affiliate link is in the description. It gets you a free trial as well as a 50% off discount. Thank you to everybody for your support. All right, let's see what we got here and let's qualify this list first. Uh, with the description in our assessment, stocks with fundamental issues become even riskier during tumultuous times. In our experience, fundamental portfolio managers do not bottom fish in uncertain times like now. Rather, they focus on high conviction names, sell anything deemed marginal, and save new ideas for another day. Then they add here, we expect the following stocks to be subject to violent reversals. All right, let's see what we got. And they've broken them into different sectors, which is helpful. We got communication, Disney, Match Group, Meta Platforms, Dish Network, and Netflix. So right off the bat, you got some large cap stocks. These are not small names, right? Disney, Meta, and Netflix are certainly stocks that I would consider as the market continues to bleed out, uh, of course, for a longer term basis. But I wouldn't say that those are horrible companies. All right, now how about consumer discretionary, where we have, of course, a lot of commentary on how much consumers will spend when facing this potential recession uh, slash high price scenario. They say steer clear of Etsy, Caesars, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Penn National Gaming, and Carnival. So one pattern I see right off the bat is you'd have to say the uh, they're not bullish on the gambling sector since you've got two gambling names, and then maybe the travel slash cruise line sector uh, looks to be at risk in the eyes of Wells Fargo. And then Etsy gets into the e-commerce world, which has already been hammered significantly uh, through the beginning of this year. All right, how about consumer staples? A lot of people would argue that consumer staples are a good play right now because people go back to the things that they actually need. Yet here we are with Walmart, Estee Lauder, Lamb Weston, and Clorox. So honestly, to me, it's just a little surprising to see any uh, consumer staples on there, but those are the ones to avoid uh, in terms of Wells Fargo's opinion. Then energy. Could there be energy stocks on here in the face of rising gas prices? Schlumberger, Williams, Phillips 66, and Kinder Morgan all make the list despite a lot of the hoopla around energy stocks right now. Next up, we have the financial sector, which is another one that some people speculate with interest rates going up. Uh, they could see a small boom. Synchrony Financial, huge player in the credit card space. They're on the short list. City on the short list. Market Access and T. Rowe Price. Then we get into healthcare, which again, many would say is a relatively safe place to hang out during this recession since ultimately increased costs get passed on to insurance carriers. But we have Moderna, Dent Supply, Biogen, Illumina, and Align Technology here at the bottom. So I guess you could argue that Illumina and Align Technology uh, veer more into the optional procedures. But I will say I was a little surprised to see Moderna on this list in terms of stocks to short, only because it has fallen so far. Now, looking at industrials, we have Fortune Brands, GE, American Airlines, Stanley Black & Decker, and Boeing. Now, from my desk, I would say Boeing, American Airlines, GE, pretty bold picks to short in a scenario where the airline industry is recovering very rapidly. And even if consumer discretionary does go down considerably, uh, the return of business travel is alive and well, and you can do a lot of reading on that 
Uh, but business travel conferences, those are all back in gear big time here in 2022. All right, how about information technology? Who else is going to fall? Uh, EPAM Systems, Ceridian, Corvo, IPG Photonics, and PayPal. So PayPal, uh, stock that I own, and Wells Fargo says farther to go. Some of these other picks aren't as bold, uh, and I was surprised, at least from the short standpoint, that they didn't have more semiconductors represented on here. That's not to say I don't like the semiconductor stocks, but I would say popular theory right now is that demand for semiconductors uh, goes down significantly, call it over the next 18 months or so. All right, how about materials? Avery Denson, DuPont, Ecolab, and PPG. So some pretty big companies in the materials list. Then we look at real estate. Obviously, real estate is getting a lot of projections for uh, a horrific downturn. And you have Equinix, Simon Properties, Alexandria Real Estate, and Vornado. So those are four companies in the real estate sector that Wells Fargo is saying consider shorting from here. Then we get down to utilities, okay? PPL, American Water, Pinnacle West, and AES. And I'm not familiar with all these utility companies, but again, I would say mildly surprising. Uh, you need to have your lights on. You need to have natural gas in your home, depending on where you live. Uh, frankly, I'm a little surprised that there's much of anything to short in that sector. Okay, now let's go back in the calendar a little bit, just a few days. Uh, that last article was published on June 19th. Here on June 14th, we have Wells Fargo unveiling their recession stock portfolio. All right, let's see what this list is all about. Uh, they say, according to Fed data, at the end of 2021, nearly one quarter of U.S. household assets were in equities. We viewed this as a major risk as a material. Extended sell-off likely would impair sentiment and discretionary spending. We believe this vicious cycle has been triggered and is complicated by the corner the Fed has painted itself into. We estimate U.S. household assets could decline some $6 trillion or 4% in Q2 due to the market sell-off. Now, once in a recession, the Fed will likely turn quickly to easing. For equities, this would mean more volatility, better bid for risk aversion, and a delay of cyclicality until the easing cycle begins, therefore our shift on the reopening names. All right, not sure I follow all the logic there, but let's get into the list. This is the recession portfolio by sector. All stocks weighted 1.8%. All right, starting at the top with communication services, Fox, AT&T, Electronic Arts, Comcast, and Verizon. So Wells Fargo feels good about these names, but is calling to potentially short Disney Match Meta Dish Netflix. So interesting positions there. Consumer discretionary. Green lights for Lowe's, Garmin, Genuine Parts, Yum Brand, and McDonald's. Looking back at the shorts on consumer discretionary, we had Etsy, Caesars, Norwegian, Penn, and Carnival. All right, how about consumer staples to invest in? Hershey's, Mondelez, Colgate, Coca-Cola, and Pepsi. On the short side, if you remember, we had Walmart, Estee Lauder, Lamb Weston, and Clorox. Let's look at energy. These are the picks for buying in energy. Marathon, OKE, Chevron, Williams, and Kinder Morgan. Let's go back on the short side. And in energy, we had Schlumberger, Williams Companies, Philip 66, and Kinder Morgan. So somehow, some way, Kinder Morgan made the short list and they made the uh, recession portfolio as well. I'm not sure how that works. Financials on the positive. Travelers, W.R. Berkeley, Chubb, Lowe's, Berkshire. Financials on the short side were Synchrony, City, Market Access, T. Row, and Invesco. Next up is healthcare. And on the buy side, they have Amgen, Gilead, Merck, J&J, &J, and Bristol Myers. On the short side, we had Moderna, Dent Supply, Biogen, Illumina, and Align Technology. All right, how about industrials? 
buy side, 3M, General Dynamics, Republic Services, Antec, and Waste Management. And on the short side in industrials, we had Fortune, GE, American Airlines, Black & Decker, and Boeing. All right, let's look at the buy side for tech. ADP, Broad Ridge Financial, Roper Technology, Jack Henry, and IBM. The short side was EPAM, Ceridian, Corvo, IPG, and PayPal. Materials, on the buy side, packaging, Air Products, Dow, Corteva, and International Paper. Short side, we had Avery Dennison, DuPont, Ecolab, and PPG. Real estate on the buy side, Health Peak Properties, Mid-American Apartment, Avalon Bay, Well Tower, and Realty Income. On the short side, we had Equinix, Simon Properties, Alexandria Real Estate, and Vornado. And finally, utilities. Buy side is DTE, Dominion Energy, Public Service Enterprise Group, Duke Energy, and Ameren. And refresher on the sell side, it was PPL, American Water, Pinnacle West, and AES. All right, guys, so there's about 50 stocks on both sides of the coin from Wells Fargo's perspective, right? You had 50 stocks to short and 50 stocks to put in a balanced uh, recession portfolio. And my bottom line opinion is, you know, first of all, I don't short stocks. I'm trying to own shares of companies that are growing revenue and profits into the long term. So shorting is, of course, betting against a company's performance, whereas I like to look for opportunities for growth and revenue. So it's kind of antithesis of how I look at things. I guess my opinion on the recession portfolio is there's a lot of good names in there, a lot of quality companies, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Marathon, et cetera. Uh, but I think one thing stands out with all of them, and they're not going to be able to grow uh, double-digit growth anytime over the next three to five years on an annual basis. All of them are going to be playing the profits game uh, and the dividends game, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with. And if we do end up going into a recession and we continue to see this uh, flatline out of the market, then dividends and earnings growth is going to be very good uh, over the short term. The way I personally look at things, though, I would rather get a discount on growing stocks and place my bets there as opposed to just sort of treading water and protecting to the downside because, again, I'm in this for multiple years, so I have time for things to turn around. All right, now let me know what you think in the comments about 50 stocks to short, 50 stocks to potentially invest in during this time. Which of those names are you intrigued by? And before you go, don't forget to check out that Seeking Alpha free trial offer, my affiliate link in the description. I hope everybody's doing well. We'll see you on the next video.